Hey everyone, Shane here with ETR.com. Today I have a 2021 Sunset Park Sunray travel trailer. I'm going to walk through how to install the Max Air Deluxe roof vent. Adding a roof vent to your camper or upgrading the roof vent uh, can be a big deal to how your stay is when you're out camping. The one that was previously on here uh, was just a one speed vent, small fan, and it just wasn't quite doing the job. Going up to the, or upgrading to the Max Fan uh, Deluxe, gives you 10 speeds. Uh, it's gonna move a lot more air inside the camper, whether it's a small one like this or a larger one uh, that you may have. Uh, this is gonna have two different ways of travel, so it can pull the air from inside out, so the stagnant air will move uh, if it's sitting still. It also do a reverse and act as a ceiling fan, so it would actually pull air in so if you're out somewhere, maybe it's just cool enough that you don't want to use the air conditioner, uh, you can turn the fan on, it'll keep that air moving in there and keep you cooled off uh, to make it more comfortable. We're going to be installing the uh, fan that has the 10 speeds, it's a manual lift. There are other versions available, you have 4 speed, uh, again the 10 speed, you have manual, and then you have powered or with a remote. You can find the different ones here at eTrailer. The one that we installed here is, is the smoke. This is also going to be available in white. You can find those here at the trailer as well. Now what's going to set this one apart from like your standard vents? Not only that it has the 10 speeds, but the standard ones just have a lid that opens up. So if it's raining out, you wanted to open your vent, you'd have to have a cover over top of that. With this one, we don't need it. You can see that our actual opening is down here on the bottom. So it's completely covered. We don't have to worry about the rain getting inside of here. Bottom side is going to have a screen on it. This is going to help keep any bugs from getting in onto your fan. A couple things to keep in mind is the, the fan kit or install kit is not going to come with the butyl tape and it's not going to come with the self-leveling sealant, which is this stuff here. You need to make sure you have that for installing the vent on your camper. You can find those here at eTrailer. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look inside, see what it looks like on the inside of the camper. We'll go ahead and turn it on, show you the different speeds uh, and how it actually works. Our screen here easily comes out, these little tabs, they just twist, twist them all the way around. You can drive your screen out, that makes it easy to clean. Allows you to wipe off your fan blades if they get a little dusty. Your open and close is here. It locks in place, so pop it down, twist it. That's how you open and close the lid. Here in this corner, you have your on and off button. You have your plus and minuses, your fan speed, and then your temperature or your thermostat. And then this is what I was speaking about earlier, where you can change it from a vent to a ceiling fan. Ten speeds. So even when it's up all the way, you can see here that it's not very loud. It's not something that's going to wake you up if you had it up all the way while you were sleeping. We turn it, the fan's going to stop and it's going to start spinning the other way. And that is blowing out. That makes it a nice, that gives it a nice feature. Again, while we're inside the camper, if we want to change the way the air is flowing from inside to outside, we can do it by the push of a button. So when we compare this fan to or vent to some of the other types out there. You're going to have fantastic vent and you're also going to have vent line. Vent line is going to be more towards your standard one that you would get on your camper. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got the small fan in it. Typically, they're only one speed and they don't change directions. Closest one to this is going to be the fantastic vent. It's not going to look the same on the outside. It's going to look like a standard vent. However, those are going to give you the different speeds. You can get remotes with them. Uh, they're going to have rain sensors on them. So unlike this one where we don't need a sensor because it's completely covered, the Fantastic Vent actually has a sensor on it. So if you have it open and it rains, it's going to sense that and it's automatically going to close the lid. Now, keep in mind, not all of them have that sensor, but you can find the ones with the sensors here at eTrailer. Out of these, between this one and the Fantastic Vent, um, I tend to go more towards this one only because... With it being completely covered, I don't have to have an extra cover. Uh, the one with the sensor, that kind of worries me that maybe the sensor is not going to work at some point in time. And then my vent's going to be open and I'm out somewhere when it starts raining and then the whole inside of my camper gets wet. 
with this one we don't have to worry about it it's completely covered if it rains we don't have to worry about it got the 10 speeds change direction uh, and then it's just as easy to put in the new vent is also going to come with this trim piece uh, it will have to be kind of cut down depending on your roof thickness uh, but that's pretty easy to do now that we've gone over some of the features we'll walk through how to get it installed solder insulation we need to remove our old vent we're going to start on the inside we're going to remove this uh, trim piece here phillips head or square bit you should have four screws one on each corner Next thing we need to do is we need to disconnect our wiring. Make sure all the power is shut off before you get to this. Uh, these crimp connectors, I might see if I can save them. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. I'm gonna see if I can squeeze them and pull the wires out. It looks like that one's not gonna come off. That's what I'm gonna do to make it easy on myself. I'm gonna cut these wires a little bit back so I know what colors go where. Up here on top, we need to remove all the screws that run along this outside edge. Uh, you take a plastic trim panel tool, you can kind of see where the screws are sitting. We're just going to kind of peel up to expose that screw. Then we can take a square bit and then we'll remove those. You want to make sure you hang on to these because we're going to be reinstalling them on the new vent. We're going to do that all the way around this outside. Once you have all your screws out, you can't just take it and pull it up. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go along and separate the uh, sealant from this metal piece. Now, once you get there, underneath this edge, there's going to be some butyl tape. So you don't just want to take it and pull it up. You're going to have to take your blade, kind of stick it in there because if, and kind of uh, peel it off. Because if you try to pull it off, what you're going to do is you're going to stretch out your top. And we don't want to do that. If you decide to go and cut along this edge, make sure that you don't go all the way through it because your top actually goes down and folds inside the opening where this sits inside. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of score it. And again, I'm using my plastic blade, not a metal one, because I don't want to damage that, the top. As you can see, I'm actually uh, taking this stuff off from the outside instead of cutting it. Uh, if you find it easier to do it that way, you can, or do it this way, you can. All of it's going to have to come off anyway uh, to put the new stuff down. So however you got to do it to get it off, just make sure you protect your top and you don't cut it or damage it in any way. These plastic trim panel tools that I'm using, if you don't have any, you can find a set here at eTrailer. They work really well for doing this type of work on your camper. So once we get all of it kind of off the edges, as I mentioned before, you're going to have some butyl tape that runs along the underside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of feed this trim panel tool underneath and just kind of cut it. Because again, we don't want to stretch our top. Once 
once you get your old one removed, we're gonna come back and we're gonna clean off all this extra stuff as much as we can. So when we put our new one on, our new butyl tape, it sits as flat as possible, make sure it doesn't leak. Now your new fan uh, is gonna install a little bit different. This piece that connects to the top of the roof actually separates from the fan and then gets attached to it later on. What we need to do is we need to get to the bottom of it. This is gonna be the top side, which is gonna stick up on top of the roof. This is what's gonna to seal to the roof. So we're gonna flip it over like this. We're gonna take our butyl tape. And we're gonna run it right along the edges. I'm gonna make sure we're covering these screw holes. Once we get all of our butyl tape in place, we can pull off the paper. We're going to flip it over. I'm going to make sure these connection points are facing to the outside, not to the front or the back. I'm going to set it in place like this. Push it down. Make sure it's got a good seal all the way around. And then we can start installing our screws. Now I mentioned before that the, uh, to hold on to your old screws, the new kit is gonna come with new ones. Uh, it's really up to you which ones you wanna use. These are Phillips, the square bits are normally easier to deal with. But we're gonna go ahead and use the Phillips heads. We're gonna have two different size Phillips. You're gonna see you're gonna have a longer one and a little bit wider one. The four wider ones are to attach the vent to this piece here. So you wanna make sure you're not using these uh, to attach this the trim piece to the roof itself. Now we're gonna set our vent in place and attach it to the ring. Uh, what we're gonna to have to do is this knob right here, you're gonna pull out on it, and we're gonna open it. Notice the way that it's opening. It's gonna sit flat, the hinge is back here. We want this towards the front of the camper, this open side going towards the back. We're gonna set it in place and line it up with these attachment points. Once we get it lined up, we can drive those four screws into those connections to attach this to that trim piece. So the back ones are gonna be the tougher ones. You're gonna have to kind of push down on it to get the hole to line up because there's a rubber seal inside this or a foam seal inside of this lip to keep water from getting in there. So now that we're inside the camper, what I forgot to do was loosen up the wiring and hang it down so I can make my connection. So rather than going out, taking the top back off, you can take your screen, pull it off, it's just little turn knobs, comes off really easy. Take a Phillips screwdriver, and you're gonna have four screws right here that drops this whole piece, and that'll give us access to the wiring on that side. Might have to take out your handles. Well, and our wiring 
right here on this side. Once you get your wiring done, you can go back and reinstall this. Now we've got our wires done, we'll go ahead and short back the ends. So if we look at our previous, where I cut them off, our two white with the orange stripes, go to our black wire. We'll take these two, we'll twist these together. Put on a new butt connector. The same thing with our two white ones, which is going to be our ground wires. The kit is going to come with uh, male and female spade connectors. The problem is they're small, and these wires are pretty thick. You're probably not going to get them inside the spade connectors together. So that's why I'm using the butt connectors. So because I'm using a 10 to 12 gauge butt connector, this wire is pretty, pretty thin. I'm going to strip back a little bit farther, and then I'm going to double it over. To the appropriate wires there. There's our ground. We'll do the same thing with our power wire. Once we get that on, you can tape them up if you want to. We can take them and kind of tuck them up to the side uh, in there so they're up out of the way. And then we have our trim piece. Now the old trim piece, the corners are a little bit different, so we can't reuse it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to trim down our new one so that it fits. So now what we need to do is we need to cut this because it's gonna be too wide to fit inside the camper. I'm gonna cut it the same size as the other one, or the same uh, height as the other one. And then if we have to go down lower than that, we can. I'm gonna mark it in a couple of different places at that measurement. You can also go from the bottom edge of the ceiling up to where it hits the fan and then add a little bit. Uh, this one measured about two and a half inches. So I'm adding an extra, extra half inch so it goes up past that. We'll just mark this all the way around and we'll take a straight edge, make that straight line. I'm just gonna take a rotary tool and cut that plastic off. Once we get it off, you can either take a file, uh, you can see that the little extra is coming off. You can take a file and rub it off. You can take a utility knife like this and just kind of run across it. Most of the time, just uh, rub rubbing it with your fingers will get it off. Now we can slide our new piece up into place. Make sure it fits good up against the ceiling. If we have to trim off a little bit more, you know, trim off what you need, put it in place, and then we can install our four screws. The kit is gonna come with new screws for this inside piece. They're gonna be flat, and they're gonna be painted. Phillips heads. We've hooked our battery back up. Go ahead and flip it on. Now we know it's working. Try it the other way here. Now that we know it's working correctly, we can go up on the roof and we can seal around the edges. 
I like using this LaSalle Bristol Extreme self-leveling non or I'm sorry, self-leveling sealant. Uh, as much as I've used this stuff, this uh, LaSalle Bristol seems to work the best uh, as far as applying it, being able to work with it. Um, you can get it in different colors. You can find the different colors here at E-Trailer. I'm going to use white. Um, I recommend, this doesn't come with your kit. I recommend getting probably two of these. And what we got to do is we got to raise our vent up all the way. We're going to do underneath this end piece and along the sides and then what we're going to do is we're going to close it so we can get the back side of the vent or front side of the camper. We want to make sure when we do this we're covering these screws and this edge. We're gonna do something like that all the way around it. Now with everything sealed, you wanna make sure you let it sit for about 48 hours. Once you've got all your sealant down, you go ahead and take off the uh, plastic covering that was covering your lid, you're ready to go. And do it for a look at in installation of the Max Fan Deluxe fan or vent on a 2021 Sunset Park Sunray Travel Trailer.